Have you ever thought about what makes you, you? We may automatically think about the things that define us as a person and we have control over, such as our clothes, jobs, friends, and all the little things that make up our day-to-day -day lives. You may even think about your genetic makeup, the strands of DNA passed from parents to children that code for proteins that define the way that we look, act, and possibly even how we feel. Many people don't realize that there's another factor that shapes us. This is a mixture of environment and genetics. The growing field of research that studies environmental and genetic interactions is called the Developmental Origins of Health and Disease, or DOHAD. This field investigates the association between environment exposed to the fetus in early life and development of chronic diseases throughout life. This means that choices, such as diet and medication, made by a pregnant mother generates a uterine environment that can be abnormal for the developing fetus. The fetus adapts to this environment by expressing a phenotype, or trait, that promotes survival in this potentially abnormal uterine environment. These phenotypes have been shown to persist throughout the fetus's adult life and can even transfer across generations. One of the first and largest DOHAD studies investigated the relationship between fetal life and adult life during the 1944 Dutch famine. During this time, there was limited food since it was the end of the long World War II, and to make matters worse, there was a ban on transportation of food to the Netherlands. In the winter of 1944, food ran out quickly for the Dutch people, and many were left to starve. This event was significant to the scientific community because it provided a rare starvation event occurring in a developed country that had extensive health records. The large-scale population-based study showed that individuals had different body compositions depending on exposure to malnutrition during fetal life. If the mother was malnourished during the last trimester of pregnancy, the infants grew up to have a lower incidence of obesity. However, if the mother was malnourished during the first half of the pregnancy, there was a higher incidence of obesity. This study suggests that the fetus undergoes genetic modifications in response to the nutrient-poor fetal environment, which predicts being born into an environment where food is limited. Basically, to prepare for survival, the genes promote fat storage later in life. This phenomenon has also been observed in socioeconomic studies. Overall rates of cardiovascular disease increase with rising national wealth. This suggests that a high nutrient fetal environment followed by plentiful food in adulthood may be a recipe for adult chronic disease, such as cardiovascular disease. Because this is such a new and developing field, there is still much to learn about the underlying mechanisms of these fetal adaptations. However, the mechanisms seem to involve something called epigenetics, where expression of genes change in response to environmental influences. These changes in gene expression may even be maintained across generations. Let's summarize. First, the environment, even as early as in the uterus, has clear impacts on future health. Second, our DNA is not set in stone. Genes actively interact with the environment to be adaptively modified. This is a small part of an overall huge picture of the many, many factors that define our appearance, personality, and behaviors.